in a world where technology is rapidly advancing. Where the power of robotics, artificial intelligence is transforming industries. Where the future of innovation is unfolding before our very eyes. Comes the gathering of the year. The Chia Robotics AAE Symposium. Step into the future. Discover the art of automation. Welcome to Chieda Robotics IA Symposium. The officials from the city of Mflatose, I saw the deputy city manager, city development, and the COO who is amongst us and all other city officials. Ladies and gentlemen, receive my warm greetings this morning. Uh, if we talk about the industrial revolution and the mayor is using papers in front of him, <laughs> that's the first apology one should give. <laughs> to say I couldn't charge my phone yesterday, so I'm, I'm, and I'm unable to actually adapt <laughs> with the theme of this uh, function. I'm quite pleased to be here in this room with some of the technologically great minds of our province to pave a way forward for the development of our city scientifically. As some of you may know, the city of Mthatuza is committed to using technology to improve the lives of our residents. We believe that technology can help us to make our city more efficient, sustainable, and connected. That is why we are investing heavily in robotics and artificial intelligence programs in the city. We believe that these technologies have a potential to revolutionize the way we live, the way we work, and interact with the world around us. Our council approved a safer city crime prevention strategy in December last year, which aims at trying to contribute with technology in the fight against crime. Because many of you are witnesses that when the Minister of Police announces the crime stats every quarter, we always all cry. Even us who are leaders, we always say, hey, there is crime, but there is nothing we are doing. So council has approved a crime prevention strategy here in the city, and it aims at using technology to actually address crime. We have, for instance, budgeted an amount of two million rand in the next financial year, and it's approved in the draft budget to actually establish a control room for CCTVs, which will be installed in strategic areas in the whole city. We are also, for instance, started receiving the, the, the donations from big industries, which I forgot to actually recognize if they are present. Hulamin, for instance, has donated uh, two vehicles and also six traffic officers. They are paying for vehicles and paying for salaries of these traffic officers. And we only deal with the management because as you know, the management and uh, other issues are dealt with by government structures. So we asked that, in fact, yesterday I heard that they are giving us six more vehicles and the CM has already signed and approved that. So we are starting to see some signs of us moving forward uh, with that because those ones will assist us in the fight against the trucks which has, you know, which continue to devastate our, uh, you know, infrastructure in the whole city and we can't chase them away because that is the economy. As they learn whatever they are putting in the port, we receive revenue as the, uh, from the port uh, because it pays for services from us. We receive revenue from the employees uh, of the port, so we can't say trucks must go away. We must efficiently manage the movement of trucks and the movement of traffic in the city so that we save lives. We don't want to see a situation like Pongola 
in other areas where people lose lives because there's a lot of truck congestion. And yesterday, for instance, we met with the Tronox, which is one of the biggest industries in the area, to present this strategy. And they were actually on board, but of course they will advise us on where can they best uh, contribute in the fight against crime and in partnering with us in this project we have actually uh, established. We are not necessarily looking for money. It could be donation in kind in the items which are included because I know industries or rather private sector is not keen in giving government uh, you know, money because of the corruption that exists in our country. Uh, so we are also very uh, aware of that and we are saying where there is a plan, they approve also the plan, they can also give us just those items which we need so that our people can begin to see service delivery. That is why, as I said, for instance, we are investing a lot of money on this project. This project will not only cover areas of the CBDs, it will cover even the townships. Um, I'm not saying there, is, there are no criminal activities in the CPDs, but if you look at the crime stats, probably the police stations in your Mpangeni areas, in your Eskalene areas, your Mtunzini areas, those ones are actually leading with the crime stats. So this will actually you know, benefit even the township people. Al can be so expedient in analyzing data and making predictions. This can help us to make better decisions about everything from traffic management to public health. As we move forward, we will continue to invest in robot skills related programs. We believe that these technologies are essential to our future success. I would like to thank all of you who are here today. Your support is essential to our success as the city and the success of the people of Umtlatose. Together we can create a smart city that is a model for the whole world. Robotics are two of the most transformative technologies of our time. They have the potential to change the way we live, the way we work, and the way we interact with the world around us. Here are just a few examples of how robotics can be used in our city. We can use robotics to automate tasks such as trash collection and street sweeping. This frees up our workforce to focus on more important tasks such as providing public services. We can use artificial intelligence to analyze data and make predictions with regards to service delivery. This will help us make better decisions about everything from traffic management, safety, and health. As the city, we are currently migrating most of our systems to digital digital mostly through the e-services system, which already allows residents and households to electronic, electronically pay for their rates and municipal services online without having to go and stand on long queues at the city rates halls. We are committed to using these technologies to make our city a better place for everyone. The city is committed to supporting the development of our young people this is why we have launched a STEM program at Amangwe High School. This program aims uh, to support high school learners from around the area with training in science, technology, engineering, English, and mathematics. The Shita Robotics Club is a part of the STEM program. The club is running at Amangwe High School with 50 learners as it was said earlier on, from Amang High School, from Dover High School, and Zipozonke High School. And I would like to thank those who continue to fund these projects. I think it's a very good investment, which will allow us when we have retired, if we will ever retire, <laughs> when we look back, we are able to say we were part of taking our city forward. And that is why things are kind of a better uh, developed area than many other areas. The club is providing learners with the opportunity to learn about robotics. The learners are also learning how to design, how to build, and program the robotics. 
This robotics is providing learners with the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in the digital economy. I would, I would like to thank the Chemical, Chemical Industry Education and Training Authority, as well as Algo, work, Algo at Work Robotics Academy for their work in supporting our young people. I always say, I don't know how I landed where I am. Probably it's because of the power of God. Because when I grew up, I grew up, I don't think many of you know, knows what is a rural area. Because where I come com, for, from is a rural area. And I remember um, uh, Professor Abdekan, I was a student at the University of Zululand. So the first time I came in there, we were given an assignment and they said we must type the assignment. So I had never been exposed to the computer in 2004. And after that, that's where my activism started. I enforced that in the Faculty of Education, learners must be taught a computer module must be introduced in the curriculum so that learners are able to be, you know, competent in terms of when lecturers need, you know, assignments typed, but learners have been taught because I never had that access uh, uh, in my high school education. And I think now they are doing that module in the Faculty of Education because I was trying to say those who will come after me and who comes from a rural area, which I know, which you don't know, <laughs> uh, must not suffer the way I suffered because I had to fail that assignment. Uh, simply because I could not type, you know, you would have to be slow, you know, you look closer to the computer and you do all sorts of things, you, you'll know them. And when my, my daughter now, who is nine years, is able to type, is able to print, I'm like, yeah, uh, the world is changing. Because at this age, uh, I was afraid of a car. When the car is passing by, we would hide in the bushes. Uh, but this child, these children are able to touch a computer, you know, work with it, and it excites me. So I'm trying to say this work, Cheetah and Algo at, 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 at work, a, a robot a cup team is doing, and the industries actually excites me because I never had this opportunity. And if you have this opportunity, tap into it because the next life we are going to live is a life that will require 90% of, uh, uh, of, of, of technology. And it's important that we prepare our kids for the next uh, uh, life, which is going to be kind of very easy compared to how we live today. We know that many people, uh, I also like to congratulate all the learners who are participating in the club. I am confident that the club will help our young people to achieve their full potential. We know that many people are concerned about job losses due to robotics. We understand these concerns and we are committed to working with our residents to address them. We believe that the best way to address concerns about job losses due to robotics is to invest in training and education for the future of the jobs. We are also looking at working with local businesses and industries to develop strategies for using robotics in a way that creates jobs rather than destroy jobs or destroy them. We believe that by working together we can create a future where everyone has the opportunity to succeed regardless of their job. We are confident that by taking these steps, we can create a future where everyone has the opportunity to succeed regardless of their job. As a developmental local government structure, we are committed to work with citizens and groups within the community to find sustainable ways to meet their social their economic and material needs and improve the quality of the people's lives. I wish, you, uh, I wish all of you well and good during the official launch and commencement of this symposium. I hope this session becomes fruitful and productive for the betterment of our city and the people. I therefore uh, uh, give to you my message of support and making sure that this project does not die on our hands. 
but it succeeds provided we are still here as the leadership. And I would like also to advise that this project, you know in politics, uh, you, you have this leader coming in, he comes and creates his own thing. He stops that one. That one goes out, he comes in with someone else. In this city, it's not like that. We have continued with ideas which we found as this administration, which were actually started by the previous administration. If those ones are people-based, they are going to benefit our people. And I believe that if we initiate things that are of need to our communities, even when I'm no longer here, whether by death or whether by resignation or expulsion uh, or anything, anything happens in politics. You must not live knowing that you will be there uh, in the next few years uh, because this thing is not yours, it's for the people. So things which belongs to the people, uh, at a particular time, people take it away from you because it belongs to them. So I don't want those who will remain as officials, this project to actually, you know, get destroyed along the way. We want to see it even when we'll be at home. Uh, this project continuing, our kids will benefit, and so many. As I've already said, I'm excited that this project is benefiting mostly where it was actually, uh, you know, lodged, the majority of the poorest of the poor. And it is through projects like this that we can bridge the gap between the poor and the rich. And I'd like to congratulate these learners uh, who have come here to present. I actually heard about your ideas when the two gentlemen came to present in my office, that there is artificial intelligence that can tell you, even if you are blind, where are you, uh, how far are objects around you, and I was very excited. And I committed to say, I will have to go to the ITZ and actually have a look of these things. Unfortunately, I have not got time. My commitment still stands, and I will come and visit so that I see these things. Sometimes you must not be told about good things. You must have seen them. Thank you very much.